Deputy Ghana AIDS Commission estimated the number of adults and children living with HIV as of 2015 at 275,000 and prevalence at 2%. At the end of December, we had about almost 100,000 people on therapy and treatment therapy, yes. Ghana now, we estimate that 290,000 people are living with HIV. Noguchi Memorial Institute for Research focuses primarily on research into infectious diseases such as malaria, soil transmitted and schistosomiasis, HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis, boruliosa, poliomyelitis, sexually transmitted infections, viral hemorrhagic fever, among others. The institute conducts clinical trials and preclinical studies on drugs products that involve in vitro and vivo anti malaria activity testing and more. Dr. Odum explains the process and steps taken to arrive at the result on a particular disease. Viruses in general, you cannot see them with your naked eye like I'm seeing you now. Neither can you see them under the microscope. You don't see anything. The only way we can see viruses is to put them on cells and say that okay, because this has destroyed this cell or it is susceptible to this cell, like, then it's likely it will be this particular viruses. All viruses have particular cell like within which they will grow or they can cause infection. Globally, there were nearly 2 million adolescents aged 10 to 19 living with HIV in 2015. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the region most impacted by HIV, girls accounted for 3 out of every 4 new infections among adolescents aged 15 to 19. Probably half of the babies born to HIV-positive mothers receive an HIV test in their first 2 months and their average age that treatment begins among children with vertically acquired HIV in a sub-Saharan Africa is nearly four years old. Despite progress in averting new infections and reducing death, funding for the AIDS response has declined since 2014 when Ghana attained middle-income status. Here people on air talking about HIV prevention and all that because of the funding scheme that has changed, the prioritization of the, those who provide the funding. There had been an expectation that the government will fill the gap through the Ghana East Commission. But to date, there was no definite mechanism except money from, let's say, the presidency to and the budget to support some of the prevention, education and things like that. A UN AIDS report on HIV prevalence in women shows that Ghana is among countries with the highest prevalence rates in West Africa. As many as 160,000 women and girls in Ghana are living with the virus, the report said. The 2015 report titled, When Women Lead, Change Happens, Women Advancing the End of AIDS, provides global statistics on the prevalence of HIV among women women across the world. Testing positive for HIV often leaves a person overwhelmed with questions and concerns. It's important to remember that HIV is a manageable disease that can be treated with HIV medicines. The first step after testing positive is to see a healthcare provider when, even if you don't feel sick, people with HIV work closely with their healthcare providers to decide when to start HIV medicines and what's HIV medicines to take here at West African AIDS Foundation and International Healthcare Center in Accra, Hacho to be precise. I'm sitting here with Sapoma, uh, one of the persons living with HIV, and she's going to narrate to me her ordeal how she received the news after being diagnosed of HIV. Sapoma, good morning. Good morning. Uh, how did you receive the news when you were being diagnosed of HIV? It was, thank you very much. Um, it's 17 years now that I got to know my status. And that time was not easy at all. It was like a dream to me because I was not expecting such news. 
The first day I was diagnosed as HIV positive was like a hell to me. I myself stigmatized myself first because I don't know whom I'm going to disclose my status to. So I did not tell nobody my status. Instead, I was not understanding the word HIV positive itself. So I was going round and round to ask people what's the meaning of HIV positive. The first place I asked is the security man at the hospital I did the test. The security man explained to me that that means the person is having HIV in their body. So from that hospital to my home was a hell to me. I did not take a car and I never recognized the way that I went to my home. So I don't know whom to talk to first. I first called my daddy because my husband was on treatment. He was at admission at hospital and he couldn't talk to me. So I have to call my father to explain what is going on and my father also cheered me up that it shall be well that's all she told me so the nurse that did the test for me that day introduced me to a herbal practitioner at that time because that time that's 99 there was no ARVs so when I went to the herbal practitioner place, I saw many persons living with HIV there that have formed a support group. Okay. Yes, because that, that time there was no medication. So when you are diagnosed, you know you are going to die. So we formed a group and we became family and friends that time. So we help ourselves, we educate ourselves. And then from there, you don't want to go to your home because you are happy when you are there. When you go home, you can't talk to anybody. Yet everything is, is heavy, heavy, so heavy that you don't know what to do. Even I myself, I stigmatize myself because I know when I bath at the bathhouse, I'm going to infect somebody. Even when I eat from the plate that all the family people are eating, I'm going to infect somebody. So I never touch anything in the house. I always shiver because I know very soon I will die. Yes, because that time there was no proper counseling then. The only thing the nurses would tell you that very soon you are going to die. Which year are we talking about? That year was 99 to 2003. Because there was no medication for persons living with HIV. Okay, so we want to find out that time you were married? Yes, I was married. And my husband was first diagnosed. He was diagnosed as HIV.
good evening and welcome to the Prime News on GNTV. It is coming to you live from our studios here at Asylum Down in Accra, Ghana. I am Sandra Ofusu Dewonu. Let's take a look at our headline stories at this hour. against GFA president by government is wrong, says lawyer Amaliba. Let's begin the bulletin tonight and legal practitioner lawyer Abraham Amaliba has stated that it was wrong for the deputy chief of staff to announce that the government has stated a prima facie case against the president of the Ghana Football Association Kwesi Nyantechi. Speaking in a phone interview on the fair show on GNTV Ghana, lawyer Amaliba clarified that causing his arrest based on the first impression, meaning everything said in the audio are accepted as correct, is the prerogative only of the law courts, but not of government or the president against the president of GFA. Another Dankwe Kufwado has directed the arrest of the president of the Ghana Football Association over fraud. The directive followed an investigative piece by age journalist Anas Arimiya Anas, after the president had watched excerpts of a video in which Mr. Nyantichi was seen negotiating for an amount of money using the name of the president. Lawyer Abraham Amaleba stated that there might be much larger issues than just the arrest of the GFA president and also the big question is what is the relationship between Kwesi Nyantichi and the president due to the excerpts of the video. You see, there are much larger issues than just arresting the entity. How come that the entity could tell investors that he has the president and the vice president in his pocket? How come that the entity would tell investors that the president is advanced in age and that most of the time he's forgetful and that if you are able to get a sense of then you'll be able to work out some things for the investors. The larger question is, what is the relationship between the chief and the president? I am told they are close friends. Lawyer Abraham Amaleba also stated that it will be more appropriate for the case to be referred to the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice Shrash for further investigations. It's sad for one person to say that I have the presidency in my pocket. And I think that if we give this matter to Shrash, for Shrash to look into it, it will help us as a nation. For one person to question the president, 